At this point in our project, we have a table called tasks and three seed rows within it. So if I go into Sublime Text 2, and we're going to edit our backbone. So far, we've only added a single model. But now I need a place to store my collection of tasks. So let's do that right now. App.collections.task, and the name of its associated model is app.models.task. So our goal in this lesson is to create a new instance of our new task collection and fill it up with all of the rows from the tasks table. Let's see how we do that. Well, the first thing I need to do is set a URL, and this will be the basis for any models within the collection. So if I set the URL to tasks, now we can run collection.fetch. I'll show you how. And by the way, let me make sure my collection is called tasks. So let's try this. Var tasks equals a new app.collections.tasks. And now if I run tasks.fetch, hmm, we're gonna get this undefined as not a function. Well, first let's make sure it did work. So it looks like it did try to send through a get request to the base collection. And in response, yeah, it did work. We did get all three of those rows. So it looks like we just have a error within our backbone, undefined type error. If I come back, you know what I bet it is? We are declaring our collection before the model. So let's make sure that when we reference our task that it actually has been created. And also because we are setting our URL on the collection, I can get rid of URL root on the model. All right, let's try that one more time. I bet that'll fix it. So one more time, we create a new tasks. Tasks.toJSON currently is an empty array. Now we're going to fetch all of them from the database. So again, it's important for me to keep going over what is happening. It's sending a request to slash tasks. We then respond to that within here and we return all of the tasks. So that's why our response is what you see right here. Now, once we've done that, Backbone automatically populates the collection. Tasks.toJSON. And now, sure enough, we have three new models. It automatically set the model type because we already did that when we defined the collection. So we could do tasks. Maybe get the very first one. And what's the title of that? There we go. So now we have successfully fetched all of the tasks from our database and populated a collection with it. Then all you would need to do is set up some kind of collection view. So let's do that really quickly together. App.views.tasks. And when we render it, why don't we say, what are we gonna work with here? Let's say the tag name is a UL. And when we render it, we'll say, how about this? This.collection.each will be this.add1. So within this add1 method, we just need to create a new single task view. App.views.task, its tag name will be a list item and when you render it, all it's going to do is this.l.html is this.model. But you know what? We don't have a template set up. Why don't we just be lazy and say this.model.getTitle. Now I can say var task equals a new app.views.task. And the model will be equal to the task that we're going to accept here. Once we've created this new view, we need to render it. And as we learned, when you render something, it's a good practice to return this. So once we render it, we need to append it to the UL. So this dot L dot append task view dot render dot L. Finally, within our collection views render method, we want to return this as well. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's try all of this out now. We are going to go back to the console, start from scratch, and we're going to say tasks collection equals new app dot collections dot tasks. I want to make sure I fetch those from the database. And by the way, that's an Ajax request. So you might want to do something in your project like .fetch .then to proceed only when Backbone has finished fetching all of those from your server. But for now, we can do it like this. So at this point, we have tasks collection .json. We have a collection of three models. Now I want to hook that up to our collection view, which we called app.views.tasks. So we'll call it tasks view equals a new app dot views dot tasks. And I'm going to pass in the collection. Now I'm going to render that collection view. And when we do that, it's going to filter through each of those items, each of those models, 
And for each one, it's going to whip up a new task view, and then it's going to render it. So it will fill up a list item with the title of that model. And ultimately, it's going to append that to the collection views root element. Tasks view dot render. And now if I say tasks view dot L, we should have an unordered list with three list items that we fetched from the database. And now do whatever it is you need to document dot body dot append tasks view dot L. And it's funny because what we've done here is, and kind of what we've been doing this whole course, is just finding different ways to put list items on the page. But this is indicative of how powerful Backbone can be, because we're doing a lot here. Even though there's only three list items on the page, what we've actually done behind the scenes is, in our JavaScript at all times, we have complete record of all of the data that we're working with. We've also fired off Ajax requests to fetch the rows from the database, We've written the necessary functionality to save or update or delete them. We're doing a lot here. So to finish off this lesson, let's hook up just a couple events so that we can update one of these rows when the model changes. I'm gonna to return to our project. And the first thing I wanna do is make sure that when we call the render method, why don't we just for now empty out our root element? And that way, whenever we call render, we're starting from scratch. We're cleaning it out. Then we're gonna filter through and add a new one. Next, I will add an initialize method. And I wanna say this.collection, when we add a new item to our collection, I wanna make sure that I add one. So what this says is, whenever the collection makes an announcement and says, hey, I've just added a new model to my collection, we want to fire the add one method. That method will accept that new task model, and it's going to create a new task view and append that to our tasks collection view. So let's try that out. We create the new tasks collection. Then we fetch them from the database. Next, we create our collection view and render it. And then we append it to the DOM. Now, we could add an item to the task collection like that, but a different way would be to use the create method. And when we run the create method, if I switch over to the documentation, that would be equivalent to instantiating a new model and saving it to the server and adding it to the set. So that's really convenient, as you can imagine. So title, and we'll just call it blah, blah, blah. And now when we run that, we have the event listener. So it listened for when the collection added it, and it updated the DOM. But also, it fired off an AJAX request to save it. And we can view this at the bottom, where we sent a post request off to tasks. And if we view this, and I reload the page, now we've added a new item using one single line of code, task collection dot create. And we can do this to four other things. For example, what about when we want to remove an item from the DOM? Well, we could do that. How about within our task view, within our initialize method, I could say this.model.onDestroy. When it fires an event that it has been destroyed, then we want to remove this element from the DOM. So I will call this dot remove. Let's try it out. Create the collection, fetch the items from the DB, create a collection view, render the collection view, append it to the DOM, and now we're going to remove one. So tasks collection, let's save our task and we'll just grab one at random, maybe the one at two. So let's see what we're dealing with here. We are dealing with the learn more backbone item. So now I'm going to destroy this and pay attention to the unordered list above. Now, I destroyed it. What did that do? Well, that sent off an Ajax request to remove the item that says learn more backbone because you're becoming a backbone pro, so that can be removed entirely. And then it also immediately was updated in the DOM. And that's because once again, within that specific view, that list item, we had an event listener listing for when the model was destroyed. And when it is, we fired this.remove. This.remove, if you're not familiar with it, it is just a convenience method around this.l.remove. So if you're familiar with jQuery calling .remove, Backbone offers a convenience method, which does the same thing. It just maps to it. But yeah, we've done a lot in this lesson, so it's a lot to take in. You might need to go back through this whole chapter and watch it again, but... Once you had this all wrapped around your mind, you're well on your way. So I'll see you in the next video.